Okay, so this is another program I've written in Python. It's a phonetic pronunciation of English words. And it caused me a few problems, I must admit. Firstly, because the character set in Python doesn't include some of the phonetic characters that you can find in any English language dictionary for pronunciation. So I had to use Pygame, which is like a graphics interface. Which is, it's quite simple to install actually. Uh, you just have to like install it on your computer, then you un you import it like this. Then <laughs> that presented another problem because it's not like the normal text input from the lines, you know, from the shell, which they normally run in Python programs. So you had I had to get another text input thingy procedure, you know, function, whatever you want to call it, from another program, which I've, like, modified to, like, incorporate into this program here, which is, yeah. This def main is another thing I had to put in, because the program wouldn't work. Well, it wouldn't, it worked, but it wouldn't, like, rework when I called it back from within the program. So what I had to do is like define the whole program as a main function, then call the program, call the main function from the program procedure. If you know what I mean. Well, I'll show you. Actually, it's just down here. So there. Play again equals true. Well, true main. So it'll do it until you close the program, basically. So that is the whole function. The whole program is now a function. Because before it was just like a big while loop. But it wouldn't it wouldn't reset the screen. It would just like freeze or do nothing. Yeah, until he closed the program. So I had to I had to put it in as a whole main function, which initialized all the the init the pie game things and did it all over again like set the screen set the clock file open reopen the file which incidentally is another thing I've, I've created for this thing the text file and uh, then read the file which is <laughs> the challenge actually Crikey. because in the file it's like two two lines for each word there's a line which represents the word well the spelling of the word, you know, in text, normal text, you know, for example, like fermentation. The second line is a list of integers separated by columns, which are the codes of the phonetics, which I've like set up as well as they are in 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 the program, like if through a bunch of if if statements when it'll work. It's, uh, God, it's so hot today. It's a bit slippery, the... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I have to go down to C drive to show you the actual file where I put all my uh, definitions in. Which that, which the file of, it, which the program here reads. And it's called phonetics.txt. See, there we go. It's uh, words and then codes, words, codes, words, codes, words, codes. And that was not as easy as I thought it was going to be to read. You know, it's just like a normal text file, but. You can't inter. You have to convert the second, the second line of each element or existence in there to a list of integers to process them. Which because I'd already written that before, so I had to convert the text element of the second line. So I kept like f switching between reading the whole elements in as a line, as a bunch of text lines, and then converting it, converting each every one into integers before giving a random number to that or just like 
reading them all in separately, line by line and line by line and line by line, etc., and then putting them in the whole array separately with each individual number to reference the first and second of each of each um, word, you know, element. But I got into a few tr uh, problems, so I just ended up reading the whole array in, picking a random one, then getting both those strings and converting that string each time into a list of integers. Which, come back to the, uh, the code section. Oh god, I'm I'm getting so hot here. Excuse me, my fingers are really slippery. See, I can't even move it. <coughs> Excuse me. I just have to wipe the the old uh, keyboard a sec. I'm just running all down my face. It's hot. It's heat. Ah. Oh. There we go. So, this is the, these are the codes that represent each phonetic, you know, character. Want. And it goes from, you know, everything. It's, I think I've ju covered just about everything. There's combinations of them which in brackets, which makes them a bit harsher or softer. But you know you can see them in the in the dictionary. Well, they're the codes anyway, which is in a file. Besides the other file called phonetic.txt, which is when I showed you just now, it's a uh, it's the word, then the list of those codes after it. Then it converts them here. Yeah. Then it goes into the entry loop. This one here. It it works out the length of the question codes. Then it decides which is which one it is that needs to be displayed, you know, from the list. So it's, it's just a bunch of if statements, really, you know. Right. Keep going. Keep going down. Display for next of word. There's oh yes, that yes, this loop is is just a thing that I decided to put in beforehand. This lot, it's just a spinning thing round around the edge of the screen as you see in a minute. It's just like a line that spins around the edge. Because it's all in real time. That's that's the way that where it's it's done in Pygame. So for PH phonetic in range naught number of phonetics. So it goes into a loop and reads all the phonetics, the number of phonetics, as in the number of codes that were in each or well, selected word that has done by random and it knows it finds out the number of codes it needs to like establish and display on the screen. So each one, it just goes through a series of if statements. So if it's that one, then it goes jumps back and doesn't bother reading anything else, etc., etc. Continue. Then there are about fifty-three or fifty-four of them. <laughs> Quite a few. Yes. So we're down, down almost to the bottom there. That that these are like character sets, KT and monospace. I had to use monospace to get some of the characters on the screen that are already actually do already exist in the Python programming age. Unfortunately, some of them don't. So, for instance, oh, where is it? The I had to draw, I had to draw a couple of lines for one of them above them. The O, the O, or something. Called. Which one was it? Where is it? Draw line. Yeah, 
There we go. Python draw A line. It's like it's like an O from the KT alpha set character set, and then you just like I just like drawed a cross above it. That's what it is. It's like an O, like that shape with a cross. One of the characters. Oops. Then it asks you to guess the word. If you don't get it right first time, it says incorrect, and then it gets you. It goes back to the top and presents you with another random one from that file I told you about. I showed you. Yes. Here we go. It comes down here and says correct or incorrect. If the word you entered was correct, then it says correct. Otherwise, it says incorrect, and then press return and it just goes back to the top because I've defined it as a whole function and it just gets called indefinitely until you press the <coughs> on the runtime window. So, let's see if it works then. I haven't run it for a while, so hopefully it will. <laughs> Run module. There we go. Ah, so there we, that's the one I was talking about. The the character, it, it did that was that character was not in the character set. So I had to put an O and then draw a line above it. That's why I had to use this graphic interface, and I had to get this text interface there as well, which was which was pretty tricky. So that is a sound called not all. Sorry, I got that wrong. It's, so that is this actually. So if I enter this, correct, and then press return, it comes up with another one. Slanderous. Incidentally, obviously I've already entered all these codes before, so it, it picks the ones out of the file that I've looked up through the table that I told you about before. So that's obviously slanderous, isn't it? It's a pretty easy one there. Yes. Ah, that's, that's, well, it's obvious what that is to me, because <laughs> I know them, but that, that, this DZ is Z, pronounced Z, so it's management, basically, Man, uh, manage, you see, you notice it's got an I there, because that's, um, how it's pronounced. Management. It's not management. It's management. 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 See? Well, anyway, there we go. So, that's the program, basically. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, that, that thing that I was telling you about spinning around the edge, I'll just put that in there for the hell of it, just trying out the graphics. Pretty cool though, isn't it? It's pretty simple to do because everything's in real time. It's constantly scanning for characters that you input from the keyboard. So in between times, you can do what you want. You can like draw a circle with a smiley face, say "Hey, hurry up!" or whatever. You know, yeah, it's quite fun. Yeah, it's quite fun. That's good fun actually. But there we go. I haven't, I haven't developed it much more than that. So. And there are there are programs you can get on through Play Store for your iPhone, uh, not iPhone, uh, well probably iPhone as well. But there's there's stuff on Play Store for Samsung, etc. That you can use. You know. Oh God, I'm trying to get out of here. I can't move the cursor because it's so slippery. Excuse me. Well, anyway, that's the program. Cheers.